Hey everyone, Happy New Year, and here's a thought for you. If, quote, people are as honest as the day is long, then is that why there's more crime over the winter? You know, Christmas and New Year. Anyway, talk of criminals, Tony Blair finally got given a knighthood in the New Year's honours list. Reportedly, it was delayed for the past two decades at the personal bequest of Prince Philip, who despised him. Well, ultimately, Prime Minister Boris Johnson thought that Mr Blair should be rewarded for his services to making the Labour Party unelectable, as well as helping Brexit by associating the People's Referendum campaign with his special brand of toxicity and hubris. In other news, I saw a story, quote, motorist killed in A1 collision. And I honestly think that the Telegraph should show a bit more respect to the grieving family and refrain from rating fatal vehicle accidents with scores like A1 as if they're BuzzFeed or something. But the large story, of course, in the past few weeks has been the Ghislaine Maxwell story. She spent her 60th birthday in prison. By the looks of things, she's probably going to be spending the next 60 of them in prison too. I'm talking, of course, she'll probably befall some kind of tragic yet fatal accident, you know, like tripping and catching her neck on a rope or maybe the kitchen accidentally using cyanide rather than paprika. It is, after all, a Maxwell family tradition to die in mysterious circumstances. In a surprising turn of events, however, it turns out that one of the members of the jury lied on the screening questionnaire and had apparently been a victim of abuse when they were younger and they discussed this in the deliberations, thus laying the grounds for a mistrial. It also means though we're unlikely to see what so many had hoped for, which was Ghislaine fully cooperating with the police and naming a series of high-profile names in exchange for a reduced sentence. You know, perhaps instead of 50 years, the judge might cheekily ask if to match her crime she'd like the prison time to be under 18 in exchange for testifying against Bill Clinton or Prince Andrew or the like, which is what this has all been about from the start let's be honest. The Glenn Maxwell case has always been very much a warm-up show. It's like back in the day when people would maybe go to the cinema to see the Pink Panther movie and they'd show one of the cartoons during opening credits. And that cartoon is great, but you're really there to see Peter Sellers for two hours. You know, some kind of farcical crime caper where Inspector Cluso investigates whether Prince Andrew can sweat or not. That's how things are going for him. Well, Andy's just had to flog his chalet in Verbier, Switzerland to fund his legal team's war chest. Although some of that money will of course be used to pay off Isabella de Rover her London the money to buy the chalet and then also sued him for seven million pounds. You know, perhaps the money troubles are why he likes to eat the weekday specials at Pizza Express, although it remains to be seen whether he's going to be later catching the Midnight Express, but a prison humour there. Or perhaps the easiest and cheapest way to get him off the hook would just be for the Queen to hand out some honours to Ghislaine and some other key witnesses, in exchange for never mentioning Andrew's name ever again. After all, Dame Ghislaine Maxwell has no less bonkers than Sir Tony Blair, although both of them do of course deserve to be in jail. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe.